What's up guys, today I'm going to show you how I do my sidechain routing as requested on Reddit, on the on the Reasoners subreddit. Um, so, uh, first things first, um, uh, I'm going to get rid of all this stuff except for the fader and the dynamic section. So you have your compressors there. Let's go back to the rack. I've got my synth, bass, drums, I've got uh, some chords, literally. Cool. So hold down shift and you're gonna create a Kong here. The reason why you hold down shift is so that it doesn't, it leaves it un unconnected. So normally it would route it to a mixer channel and you don't want that at all. So now that we're here, I hard pan the pads in pairs. So drum one left, drum two right, drum three left, drum four right. You do that for all 16. And now you go and route the outputs of the pads in pairs. So one and two go to main output L and R, three and four go to output three, four. And you do this for all 16 of the pads. What this does now is that uh, drum one is only coming out of here, only. Drum two is only coming out of here, three only here, four only here, all the way down to 16 independent pads. So now you have 16 independent uh, sidechain triggers. And you can use all different uh, sounds and samples however you want, and it leaves a lot of flexibility, and it doesn't limit you to just one kick drum and having a spider, a bunch of spider audios and cables everywhere. Um, so yeah, this makes it um, this makes it a, a lot easier, more flexible, and uh, really it's really liberating. So now. I, I personally like to use the NN Nano sampler. You don't have to use this at all. You, hell, you could use physical bass drum if you want. You could use hi-hat if you want. Uh, if you want to do like a 16th note light arpeggiation sort of thing with a sidechain, you could totally do that. And I'm just going to go ahead. Oh, that sucks. Uh, I personally use this... Uh, this kick drum sample is just my go-to. It works for me. Um, again, you don't have to use that. You can use whatever the hell you want. So now that's happening. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, by the way, this whole um, uh, hard panning and rerouting thing you can do for your regular drum. You can do for your regular drum uh, drum machine if you if you use a Kong like. Um, so that way, uh, you could just take and make a bunch of um, mixer channels, and like you know, make 16 of them if you're gonna fill it up, and then route each drum to their own mixer channel, so you can control them independently here. Um, and in the mixer channel, you can insert your own effects for each independent, for each individual um, drum that you use. So pretty handy. Yes, I want to delete it. So, at this point, you could go, you could go and, um, you can go and do this for all 16 pads, and I advise, and do the uh, panning, the rerouting, and I advise you go and save the patch. So you can use it in the future, and you don't have to do all this stuff and spend a half hour doing it. So yeah, so at this point, uh, you can pause the video, go do this for all 16 pads. Um, you don't have to put the sample; just leave it uh, an empty and a nano. If you if you're gonna go that route like me, do it for all 16. Um, hard pan them, reroute, hit save, and oh yeah, rename it too. Rename it to sidechain, so if you don't get confused. Let's put away the browser and let's go back to our sequencer. So I have my sidechain um, lane here. Let's make a region. And you're here and you've forgotten now, oh no, that which, hell, what pad went to what instrument. It's gonna go to what instrument. Never fear. 
This is why I use a Kong. So you go and you double click the word and you can rename them. I want that to go to base. And I realize at this point I haven't routed them. I, I realize that and I'm gonna show you that in a sec, but this is like the coolest thing ever to me anyways. So you go back to your sequencer and they're renamed and it shows up here so you never get lost. It's really handy. Now, again, I haven't routed anything yet, right? So let's flip the rack around. Uh, this is pad one. I want it to go to Thor, as I named it, yeah. And it's going to automatically do this um, stereo pair thing. Um, if there's any way, uh, I hate that it does this. It's annoying. Because um, this is going to go down here anyway. So that's helpful for that, I suppose. But if there's any way to turn that off, that feature off, please let me know because I have no idea how to do that. Um, so yeah, that's routed. Awesome. Now we're going to go back to our mixer. A good old SSL mixer. You're going to turn these compressors on. The key is already on because it detected the uh, sidechain routing into the mixer channels. And I don't know, let's 405. That's, that's a nice number, I suppose. 405, cool. And we're going to do just four on the floor, just quarter notes all the way through. And here's some time saving things. So instead of just drawing all of them independently by clicking and getting carpal tunnel syndrome, you're going to hold down command and spam the hell out of D, which is the command duplicate. You can do this with single notes. You can highlight chords and duplicate the chords like that. You can do this with instruments. You can do this with regions like so. It's really useful. It saves you a ton of time. And here's another time saver. Highlight that. Hold Option Alt and drag and drop, and you just duplicate the whole thing. Again, do it with do it with regions. If you want to place them a little more accurately than duplicate, you can do it with highlight chords. You can do it with instruments in the rack. It's really awesome. All right, that's good. Let's have a listen. So you see how it's not um, really, the sidechain isn't that loud, right? Or it's not triggering that hard. So let's turn this fast on. That's the fast attack and it um, kind of makes the sidechain a little more immediate. You can turn these off if you want a softer sidechain. So like say if you want a really light sidechaining on like a vocal track, for example. Um, but for instruments that want a hard sidechain, let's leave these on. You can bring the threshold down. 3644, that sounds nice. And that's sounding that's sounding a little better, but let's say you want even more uh, ducking or dipping in the volume, right? You could drag the threshold down, but <laughs> usually when I get to around here, I'm just like, there's gotta be a better way to do this. And there is. Let's go back to our good old rack. What you can do is increase the volume of uh, of the pads. You can do that through here, or you can do it through here. I prefer. I personally just like to do it through here. Um, mm, to hundred. That's cool. Um, this is the same thing, by the way, as um, if you had like this compressor, real quick. Oh. If you had this compressor, it's the same thing as turning up the input gain on a compressor, right? So, well, yes, I did. So, it, it's the same thing. So, let's have a listen. All right, that's cool. Um, and you can play with the ratio, turn it up um, however you want. You can mess with the releases. You can even mess with the, oh crud, you can even mess with the sample itself, you can pick a longer sample, like, uh, what's the one, the one sample that I like that's kind of long, I use it a lot actually, for just my regular kicks, is uh, this one, which is, has a long tail to it, so, um, 
the side chain will pick that up as oh it's going to be ducking for longer and you can go in and you can like edit how long you can adjust the fade and all that i'm getting ahead of myself but that's the nerdy kind of stuff that i get into <laughs> but you can do all that and hell let's just say you want not that but you want oh let's say you want that like um a 16th note ar light arpeggiation um yeah i'll use this that 16th note arpeggiation right on a different area of the song so that's there and what you can do because the dynamics input has two uh, the section has two inputs you can go um and go into there and so let's go back to here um duplicate that make another region and let's go 16th notes go do that and Here's a combination of techniques I taught you earlier. So highlight that, D, and boom. So that's that. So yeah, then you can have two different side chains happening like that. You can have uh, to the same one, and you can use a spider. Hell, if you want three different side chain lengths and types, you can use a spider audio to merge it and go into here if you want it. It's... So yeah, uh, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. I know it's probably kind of long at this point, but it leaves you so many options. Uh, you can rename it. Uh, it's what, Thor side chain 2. You can rename it. They show up in the sequencer. Um... Name show up in the sequencer. Ooh, I picked the wrong one there. I really want that up here, don't I? But yeah, you can do all that good stuff, and it leaves you so many options. So yeah, enjoy.